Let's get into the first topic, and it obviously is surrounding the sporting director, Fabio Paratici. And the question is, is Paratici's job now untenable? We'll start with you, Jamie. Yeah, I, honestly, the situation yesterday, total embarrassment. Of course, we saw this video come out, didn't we, of um, him kind of explaining why Spurs fans shouldn't be worried about the situation. You know, we've got 10 games to go. I thought the video, first and foremost, was totally uninspiring it was obviously it looked like it'd been filmed on on some like webcam you know on zoom or something i thought it was really poorly done it was kind of five minutes of my life i felt like i might never get back as well um you know why that was jamie because daniel levy really had to pull some strings to get it into uh into the jail you know what i mean <laughs> honestly, into prison honestly it looked like he was on the run it was it was quite <laughs> yeah. um, but yes yeah, and then of course the time in the following morning fifa come out and, he, and he's banned for 30 months and announcing this worldwide ban so real embarrassment there i think to then go and defend him as well it's just unbelievable for me i mean obviously it's difficult for them because legally i don't think you can go and sack him can you really i think it would be a case of maybe he'd have to leave but i just look at the situation that Juve, obviously Juve had all their board members resigned back in November, and yet we're yeah. still here defending this guy who's kind of been done for, you know, uh, you know this crime, and it's just bizarre. We're sticking by him. I think there's been two opportunities now where really he should have left, and again, I just say it's just bizarre that we are sticking by him. So, yeah, for me, hundred percent, it's untenable, and uh, I just think it's we're just continuing to dig ourselves a hole. And the other thing that frustrates me is that the fact that they're kind of coming out and saying that, you know, they had no clue that this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how have we been, you know, doing these shows, we're, you know, on all our different platforms saying, well, you know, it's going to come, so it's coming, coming eventually where he's going to get this ban. So I don't really understand why they've done it. They've just literally stuck their head in the stand. Yeah. And I think they've done that with so many decisions where, you know, they've just kind of, you know, almost sleepwalked into this situation. So they can kind of come out and say they were shocked by this decision, but everyone knew it was coming. And uh, yeah, again, it's just another really, really shocking way they've handled it, another poor situation. Yeah, and it's like mental to me when you're looking at Daniel Levy's history of, of maybe loyalty to, to the people that he's employed. I mean, Martin Yol got sacked at halftime. Jose Mourinho was sacked six days before a cup final. And this guy is getting all the loyalty where I don't get where it's come from. But Dave, what, what are you feeling? Is, is his jo job untenable? Is he still Don Fabio? That's all I want to know <laughs> Is he Dave. still Don Fabio? <laughs> Look, he, he is, he's, he's always going to be the Don, you know? Look, I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm actually going to be releasing a video whether he's Don or Con, and I'll let the people decide, <laughs> um, you know, with all the evidence. So uh, let's see how that goes down. But look, guys, I think for me now, I think the job has become, become untenable. Um, even if we wait around for the appeal on the 19th of April, you know, you're waiting 19, 20 days and you're quite, kind of going into where we were under Nuno for that 70 odd day manager search and you can't you can't go on like that the guy can't um you know the guy tasked with hiring the manager he can't do that job he can't really pre pre-plan much for the summer either we can barely play a game of fifa so for me there's no point in having him here because like i said it's a gamble to wait to the 19th of april because you know you, you you're hoping that his innocence will be proved or you're hoping that fifa will overturn the ban and it's a huge gamble if they don't then you know it's 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 a waste of having him here for them 19 days and wasting them days of pre-planning for next season. We're at a, a, a critical point in our club where we can't afford to be waiting around. We can't afford to be sitting there like sitting ducks. Um, you know, we we have to be proactive. We have to start getting, uh, you know, turning this club around in terms of. Um, you're going to have to sack the director of football because he's going to have to come back in and hopefully drop a manager shortlist and hire the next manager because them two positions have to be aligned. Um, like Charlie Akersher sort of said on your um, panel show there the other day. But also, you know, there's a massive job to be undertook at Tottenham and this is why we have to start being proactive. We've got 11 players out on loan, which six of them, their future sort of needed to be decided whether they're staying or being moved on permanently. We still have dead weight in our squad to get rid of. We need a new goalkeeper, which in terms will bring around the new change in captaincy in the squad. We need new centre-backs to cost a, pl 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 um, a leaky defence. And um, we also need a cam if the next manager is going to use that system, which, um, you know, we're told it's going to be someone that plays attack of football. So likely chances is he's going to need that, that cam. We need a new manager that would probably be a change in coaching staff as well. We need to create a pathway for the youth academy into the se senior team. We need to update our scouting department. Um, and that's only on the football inside of things, let alone the next director of football having to try and keep Levy and the um, the next manager sort of being the goal between between them and keeping them both happy. So there's a massive job to be undertook at this football club and we 
we have to be more proactive rather than reactive. And yeah, I mean, Sim, are you kind of buying any of these words from from Levy from the statement saying that they had no clue this was coming? Absolutely no chance. Uh, well, we are we supposed to believe that every single person in world football, every journalist, every football fan channel, every Spurs fan, you even the Juventus board to, um, um, uh, members who who resigned, they all knew this was coming. But the only people in the whole of the world football who had no idea this was around the corner is to the Tottenham hierarchy is that what we're supposed to believe i think it's absolutely farcical this whole situation to be honest and now the fact that we're hearing from ali gold that um they that there was common knowledge that paratici was under investigation months before he even signed for tottenham and he and he and he's of the opinion either tottenham didn't do their due diligence or they're just waiting for all they're all they were just hoping that all this blows over like uh, Shaun of the dead just go over to the winchester and hope for everything to blow over it's, uh, it's, it's like it's quite incredible um this whole situation to be honest i can't quite believe um that spurs uh, put themselves in this situation from um just to play devil's advocate for one second though uh, what ali gold was saying is that um obviously paratici a lot of the restructuring of the club um when paratici came in was based around him being director of football and he's put many things in place um in terms of laying the groundwork for Tottenham's rebuild and all this kind of stuff and how um football operations work and he's saying that if Paratici is to leave, which looks at a certainty at this point, then a lot of that work is most likely going to be ripped down and started what again by a, new, by, that, by a new sporting director. That's a good question what he means. I'm guessing he means uh, he's thinking that a new sporting director is going to want to do things his way. So all the processes that Paratici has put in place, they're going to want to do things a completely different way. So Tottenham have done a lot of restructuring on the footballing side, like, I don't know, scouting systems, all these different things. And a new director for football is going to have to come in and completely change up because they want to do it in the, in the way they want to do it. Mm. And I'm guessing, from a devil's advocate point of view, um, Tottenham want to give Paratici every, every chance he has to try and, I guess, win the appeal and prove his innocence or whatever it is to get him back working because they don't want to kind of chuck away 18 months or two years of work work um if it's not absolutely necessary i would argue at this point it is absolutely necessary the guy is banned from football and he's a director of football um so i think at this point we have hit that moment where i think it i think you look they brought this on, on themselves if they if it was true that they that it was that was common knowledge months before that he was going to be on investigation we shouldn't have touched him with a barge pole so the fact that that, that, that there's been an oversight there and coupled with the fact that uh, we knew this ban was coming months ago after the italian fa uh, appealed to fifa um to make his ban worldwide and we knew that it was likely it was going to be approved um i think Tottenham have many opportunities to make quick and swift decisions and just put a line under it and um, put a line under the sand and move on from this and we've decided to instead of doing that just let it drag on uh drag on and on until i don't know what they're waiting for until it's just confirmed i mean we already know he's banned from football they want urgent clarification from fifa as to what that means i mean they've pretty much laid out what it means so i'd uh, look we've got an we've got an another nine days until his appeal comes back so uh, i guess it's going to be the most amazing nine days of director of football activity in history i'm guessing to get everything done yeah, in the next, next nine, nine days, days we're going to have a new manager yeah. nagelsman's going to be in <laughs> kane's going to be we're going to have we're going to have all the summer lined up we're going to on pre-contracts Every single transfer is going to be signed up in the next nine days. Uh, I'm really looking forward to what he's going to do, but I honestly don't see the point in this continuing as well yeah. from a PR standpoint, from Tottenham viewpoint wow. standpoint, like what, um, how this looks to everyone. And as David's saying, this is really holding us back right now. What manager is going to agree to join us for a long-term vision when we have director of football banned from football currently in employed? Obviously, they're not going to look at us uh, for, for a second until they know what the state of play is going to be when they come and join Tottenham. The, at the moment, Tottenham don't know what the state of play is going to be let alone a new manager so how can our new manager take us seriously yeah it's an absolute joke and and jamie alluded it alluded to it before it's just like we've had multiple chances to sack this guy and whether you think he's done a good job or not his job is untenable now he shouldn't be carrying on in this job for any longer and you know when the news first came out that was opportunity to sack him when the juve directors um you know resigned that was a, an opportunity to sack him when conte left that was also an opportunity to sack him but why have we not done this yet guys what what, 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 what what do you say what do you say to if you know to a spurs hierarchy board member who say look if we sack him right now now, we're throwing away two years of good work. I, 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 think the, the I think the issue with sacking him is obviously it's probably the, the legal side, isn't it, really? Because I think that he's he's obviously still got this a chance to appeal. 
And you know, if that pill just becomes successful, then he obviously could argue that you know he was, you know, it was not right for them to sack him. So I'm guessing that it's obviously just the legal side that, that's kind of holding it up at the moment in terms of him being a sack him. But I think from a, a moral perspective for him as well. I think he should go as well. If he kind of had any integrity about him, he'd resign. His his position is untenable. We all know the issues. We again, I say the UA board. They all recognise what they did was wrong, and that they've all resigned. And um, it's exactly what Paratici should have done. Um, can I just say as well on Paratici? One thing that concerns me, I think somewhat of he's done is it's been a good job. I think we discussed it on the last show where we kind of looked like we were building somewhat of a good core in this team. My yeah. one concern with Paratici is that he's always kind of seen football slightly differently the way that Spurs see it and the way that obviously mm. fans see it. We've always talked about going back to this way of Tottenham playing, or Tottenham way of playing where, you know, attacking football, modern football. But Paratici, he's always looking, you know, Nuno, we've seen um, Conte appointed, we've seen, you know, three at the back system looking to be built towards that. So I kind of feel as though the visions of Spurs and what, and what uh, Paratici wants is slightly different as well. That's something that's always concern me you know we want to all speak about wanting to maybe switch back to a, a back four and, and look to be more of an attacking team but we've committed to wing backs and, and that for me has, has, has been a, always a little bit of a concern with Pratici just in terms he doesn't does he want to play the Tottenham way does he want to go back to Spurs' vision that, that Daniel Levy spoke about when just before the appointment of Nuno of getting back to the Tottenham way I just think that he sees football slightly differently and you know if he was to somehow get through this I still got you know, big concerns over whether Spurs and uh, Paratici's vision d- does align. And that, that's a big concern for me. But, you know, that's that's been a concern uh, throughout my lifetime, I can remember, with sporting directors and, and Tottenham Hotspur. You know, you look at all of them that have come in. I mean, all of them, maybe apart from Mitchell and Poch, didn't really have alignment uh, from, mm. you know, boardroom level to the sporting director to the manager. And even with Paratici and Conte, there seemed to be not, not too much alignment where you're thinking they're both cut from the same cloth. They've worked together at Juventus before. Where's this alignment gone? Because we signed Dan Juma in January and we heard coming out saying like, they didn't even check with Conte to see if he's good, is good and if he, if he suits his system or anything like that. We were desperate for a right wing back. We bring in Jed Spence, who Conte just didn't want to use at all. So, I mean... <laughs> didn't even seem to be alignment when he was here with Conte so what what has the next manager got any chance and Dave what, what are you thinking about this one look the alignment comes from you know that set from the owners what their vision or from the chairman what their vision is for the club Juventus had no problem bringing in you know old enough players paying the big wages getting world class players in whereas a repetitive team before um, Paratici got here is that Tottenham like to bring in players young, like to develop them and, and, and um, you know, get a huge resale value on them if possible. And I think that's where the sort of misalignment comes from between Paratici and, and the football club. But I think the reason why he hasn't been sat by is, I genuinely believe it's because Levy doesn't know how to get us out of this mess. And he's relying on football and people to try and pull us out of this. And, and where I'm going with that is, Daniel Lee, with, with the stadium and the um, training complex rebuild, Costs were spiralling and it was a lot to take on at once. And I think Daniel Levy then threw everything into it to try and keep the cost down as much as he could. And that took over most of his focus. Um, and he completely neglected the scouting department, the youth system, you know, the on, um, the um, players on the pitch, completely neglected it to focus on keeping the cost down on the stadium because he would have been absolutely berated. You know, he got berated anyway, rightly so, because they came in way over, but they could have been a lot higher. And, you know, we know this because on that documentary on Spurs play, he alludes to how much invested he was into the stadium, how meticulous he was over every single little detail. And I think what he's done ultimately is he started relying on experience football people within the game. As much as I didn't like Steve Hitchin, I think he has a big part to play in his recruitment on the reason what we've seen over the last couple of years. He's experienced in the game. Jose Mourinho experienced in the game. Same as Antonio Conte and Fabio Paratici. Um, so I think he's been relying on experience of football people without anyone actually having an affiliation to the club. Um, and I think that's where it's sort of gone wrong. If he had someone that had an affiliation with the club, who understood the fans, the way the fans want to see the football play, the culture of the football club, he would have been able to advise Daniel Levy a lot more. And I think, um, I think you might have seen something better by now. But he hasn't chose to surround himself by them people. Um, so for me, I think that's where, 
I think that's why someone like Parakichi hasn't been sacked, because I believe he's genuinely relying on him to pull him out of this mess. You look at it, when Paratici came in here, you know, he had to hire a sports psychologist. Why wasn't that at the club in the first place? He had to hire a part-time one for the youth staff. Why wasn't that at the club in the first place? He put out um, job, applica or, um, um, job applications for local scouts, you know, people bringing um, young players to the club. Why is that not in place in the first place? Uh, Country-wide, Europe-wide, we should already have that sort of place. Um, and that's where I, I'm going at, where I think Daniel Levy genuinely has lost control of it. And that's why he's relying on someone like Paratici, because Paratici, when he first came in here, um, he had to, he, he sort of done an, an overview or an audit of absolutely everything and then sort of formed a plan. And he's starting to implement that plan over the last few years, bringing in Greta Steinson, um, Andy Scolding, um, even that guy, um, what was his name, Perkins, who's now been and gone, that guy that they sent over to South America, that they uh, used to be a Madrid scout, who gave away our um, transfer yeah. targets on national TV and seen spot. Like, these are all things that Paratici are trying to put in place that weren't there in the first place. And I think Daniel Levy realises that we are so far behind in terms of the football side of things. You look at all the players we've got out alone, plus the driftwood in the squad. We, over the last few years, some of our best youth players are leaving. Look at Nona Madueke, the fee he went to Chelsea for. Everything on the football side of things is absolutely crumbling. And he is relying on experienced football people to try and pull us out of this mess because he doesn't know how to do it. And, uh, well, and also, I think it, yeah, go on, go and, on, also, and also, look at, we're starting the show off by talking about Pratichi. And, and I think it's kind of taking the heat off Daniel Levy a bit, isn't it, really? So I think that may Don't be worry, a rubbery. Jamie, we're going to get there. There was another reason why he's still in charge is because <laughs> I think it's kind of taking the heat off him. Of course, yeah, look, 100%, we all know the blame is on Levy. But look, publicly, everyone's discussing Fabio Pratici at the moment. Obviously, there is talk of Daniel Levy. There's always going to be talk of Daniel Levy. But at the moment, you know, Pratici is almost having to take the heat for Daniel Levy. And so maybe that's another reason why he's kind of been kept on. Yeah, yeah. so it's not a bad uh, theory but when it when it comes to um the misalignment between the director of football and and the club or the manager as well i think the red flags were there as soon as he came to be honest when you look at the manager search and when Mlevi was talking about the tottenham dna and, and then paratici comes in and supposes and and tries to get um uh Gattuso as our manager and ends up with uh, nuno spirito santo these aren't managers that represented um how to what how tottenham fans wanted us to be playing what Levy said, said literally a few weeks before Paratici came in, comes in um, those aren't the managers that really what we had in mind so I think that Paratici from that point of view had, there's always been a bit of a misalignment even then I feel like there's some red flags of the misalignment between his vision and the club's vision obviously I do think transfer business wise doesn't even know what Tottenham DNA means Paratici that's the pre yeah, I mean honest. it's part of the problem because when look when you think about it Juventus it's just very very different the style of football their, their fans are used to how their club is run what their kind of aims are win the league every single season pretty much or was when he was there um, and it doesn't matter what kind of football you play you can play defensive football whatever um, you just get experienced heads to keep you at the top of the table every single year and keep you winning and um, keep that gap and that was Paratici's aim coming to Spurs is completely different kettle of fish um, uh, the, 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 the aim is to kind of uh, rebuild a squad try and build a, um, a winning mentality from scratch trying to get us to one uh, league, league title let alone consistent league titles and also playing in a, an entertaining way which the Tottenham fans um, like to see and I think Paratici um, at the at the beginning anyway kind of struggled to get to grips with that obviously i do think a lot of his um signings individually i don't have massive complaints about them but then but then then that led to another problem when his vision all of a sudden was not aligning with how Conte, well, what Conte really wanted and it led to Tottenham signing players which didn't really fit Conte's system and that Conte wasn't really that interested in. Even when you look at signings like Richarlison who signed for 60 million with, you know, the Athletic reported that Daniel Levy headed that deal because he felt like Everton were under financial constraints and they could, there's, there's a deal that could have been done there. So it wasn't necessarily just because we felt like Richarlison was going to be good for Conte's system that we signed him. We signed him because he was a good player, player where we felt like could be available and that was um, a big issue uh, when it came to the alignment between the, the director of football Paratici and, and the club and the manager um, and I just think at this point I like do I even want him to head a new managerial search do I trust him to appoint a manager that Tottenham fans 
uh, will want uh, managing their football club. And uh, by, based on the last man, in. But based on the last managerial search, I don't. Um, look, clearly he's got a good eye for talent ID and stuff like that. He can have a good eye for a player. I don't doubt that. I think the players that he's brought in have been good, but. I do question whether um, he is the right person to head our new managerial search. But then again, if the alternative is Daniel Levy, who's the right person? Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a very difficult situation. But I think we can safely say that we're all in alignment saying that his job is most definitely untenable now. 